If you're transitioning from Lightroom and Photoshop, one of the things that you may want to do is exposure blend. Well, today I'm gonna to show you how you can do that inside of On One Photo Raw. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so here we are inside of On One Photo Raw. And of course, if you'd like to follow along, you can download these files using the link in the description box below. Now, I am not going to use the HDR merge. That is typically how I would do this, but exposure blending is really being able to take pieces of this image and then infusing it onto this image or compositing it onto that image. So what I'm gonna do is just select these two images because I wanna bring the windows into this photo uh, and make them look a little bit more lively. They're blown out here, but the inside is actually exposed. And yeah, all right. All right, so here we are inside of All In Photo Raw. And as always, if you'd like to follow along, you can use the link in the description box below. Now, the idea of exposure blending, for those who may not be familiar, is to essentially take an image like this one and then composite it with some other exposures, you know, in a same series. So I shot these images bracketed in my living room and just for, you know, instruction purposes here. So let me go ahead and jump to film strip. Now uh, this one I'm probably not going to use, but this one, let it load in here. This one has pretty good window detail. It's probably a little underexposed for what we really need, but I'll show you how to work with that inside of on one. And then of course we have the interior exposure where I actually like the lighting that's on the sofa there. So. In order to work with these images, what we're gonna do is select the two images that we actually want to blend into the photo. And then we're gonna come over here to the right side and we're gonna click on layers. Now, I know a lot of people have been telling me, well, Chris, I don't have my on one set up the same way. How do I get access to this little icon window tree over here? Well, to do that, what you'll need to do, I believe it's under view, or maybe it is under, yeah, it's under window. And then at the very bottom here, you'll click on show right bumper. If I turn that off, you can see that goes away. And then if I go back to window and I click show right bumper, I get it back. So that's how you get those icons to show up on the right side if you don't have them already. Now we'll come over here to layers. We'll click on that and you get a pop-up. It says this will combine the selected photos as layer stack into a new photo, which is perfectly fine because that's what we want it to do. And all this is saying is it's going to stack them on top of each other. We'll go ahead and hit okay and let on one think itself through and it will bring us into the editing workspace. And both of our images have now been loaded in. I'm going to go ahead and close out this bottom portion because I don't need that real estate anymore. So we'll just switch over to full screen view and I'm even going to get rid of this left pane. So that way we really have as much real estate that we need to work with here. And with that being said, right now I have the darker exposure over my actually like the exposure that I really want. And instead, what I want to do is cut holes in the exposure that I want. And this is just going to minimize the masking that I need to do. So I'm going to grab the darker exposure and I'm going to put that underneath the exposure that I want. And you'll see instantly that I am now showing the image that has the exposure appropriate for the interior. This is good. And this is where we want to be. Now, of course, if you're not seeing layers, just click on layers and expand it. But I think if you're doing something like this, you probably already understand how layers work. Now, here's where the masking technique comes in. You're always going to work with the image at the top to reveal the image at the bottom, all right? So what that means is I'm going to click on the image at the top here and for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to call this interior. I definitely did not spell that right, but it's okay. And then I'm gonna call this one window. 
right? And what that tells me is I'm using this layer just to plug in the windows, and then I'm using this layer to expose for the interior. So I went ahead and renamed the top layer interior and the bottom layer windows, and we have them in place. Everything is good. At this point, you probably want to align your layers if you didn't use a tripod. On this image, I did use a tripod, but if you didn't, what you'll do is you'll make sure all of the layers that you want to align have this little blue check mark or whatever your accent color is. And then you'll click the three line menu on the topmost layer this is my personal technique. And then down at the bottom, you'll click on align visible layers. And then on one will do its best to align the layers on top of each other. This is very important when you're trying to make sure that lines and things that uh, kind of match up when you mask them in. So now we're ready to start cutting out our windows. And for the technique that I'm going to show you, we're actually going to do this in two steps. The first step is to cut out the right window. So I'm just going to come over here to my mask layers on my interior shot, and I'm going to click the plus icon. And then I'm going to hover over line and then I'm going to use subtract. Now, if you're not familiar with the line mask tool, this essentially just allows you to click and you select nodes and points and you start to apply a mask around those areas. Now, I'm going to do a pretty crude selection here. You should definitely spend time to, you know, make your selections make the most sense as possible. However, I'm just going to do a very crude selection here because I think that the technique that I'm teaching is what's more important. And so you'll come up to the top, you'll click to close the actual loop. When you get that crosshair with a little circle on it, that's how you know that it's ready to uh, close. And then you get a paint bucket with a negative or a minus symbol. And that's just for erase or subtract, which is the mode that we selected. And so you can just click inside of the window. And now we have cut out this window and made it look like the underlying layer was actually the window in that when in that photo can't speak. Anyhow, now that we have that good to go, you would think we want to come over here and cut out the second window. And in theory, you could do that. However, because we're going to use some intersecting masks, we're going to have to do this on two separate layers. So let's just go ahead and hit the blue check mark and we will close that down. And now what I want to do is clean up this area around the couch because that just doesn't look the best, right? So what we'll do is we will come over here, expand our mask layers. We'll grab a brush and I'm just going to put it on subtract for a little while. And what I want to do is subtract the top layer from the underlying layer. And this is just going to allow us to get a little bit closer to that sofa. And you could do whatever you would need to do in order to mask in this window. But I'm just using a brush because it's faster for me and makes a little bit more sense. That's all. All right. And I do acknowledge that there's this weird overlay that's happening on the sofa. And so what I do for that is I zoom in just a little bit closer. And then I invert my brush by coming up here to paint. And then I just hover, just paint the uh, sofa back in where it needs to be. So you will spend a little bit of time cleaning up a mask. But if you want the result, this is what it takes. And, you know, that's part of the artistry of working with photos. All right. Things that come fast are not always the greatest things to have. So we'll just go all the way around. But I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time cleaning this up uh, for the tutorial purpose. But just know that this is what you um, are essentially signing yourself up for when you start to do this type of work, um, especially when you have such a drastic exposure like I do. But I'm going to hit Command and Zero to zoom out, and we'll just say that that looks pretty good. 
So the next step is to come back to the target mask area. And then we're gonna click on the three line menu and click refine. Now there's a tool that inside of here that we don't use much when it comes to masking, but that's the density tool. And I want you to watch this window as I pull the density of this mask down. You'll notice that it starts to get brighter. And the reason it's getting brighter is because I'm allowing the original layer that we were just masking away, I'm allowing that to blend with the underlying layer. And this is kind of where that exposure blending aspect comes in. So as I pull this all the way down, you'll notice that I'm getting that overexposed window again. And then as I pull this back up, I'm starting to get the actual exposure that I wanted. Now, you'll have to play around with this to make your image look the way that you want it to, but I'll probably do something around here um, and we'll call that good. Now, the next tool that you would probably want to look at inside of this particular masking uh, window or the refine mask is the shift edge. And what this does is it takes the edge of your mask and it either pulls it outward or pulls it inward, just depending on what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So if I press the letter O and you see how the inside of the mask gets a little bit gray, and then if I pull it to the right, the edges of the mask get more defined. So that's essentially what's happening. It's like moving the feather of the edge of the mask. So You'll play around with this until you find something that looks good. And then last but not least, you want to work with your feather. But in this case, I think the feather is going to cause more haloing than we want. So we're just going to leave the shift edge and I'm going to show you the other X aspect. And that's the reason why we're using the intersect mask. So let's hit OK. And now it's time to use the intersect mask and we're going to use it with a radio or not a radio gradient, a gradient tool, but we're going to use the reflected gradient. So we'll hit the plus icon here and then we're going to come down to gradient and we're going to hit subtract and it's not going to look the greatest right now, but that's okay. We're going to come over here to our gradient shapes and we're going to click reflected gradient and then where this all comes together is we're going to come over to our mask layers, hit the three line menu, and then we're gonna come down to mode and we're going to select intersect. And so now what intersect does is wherever the underlying mask, so the brush and the line mask tool, wherever those exist on the photo, and then this particular mask overlays it, then we're going to see the effect come through, which in this case, it's going to be the window. So, or, or the contents that's through the window. So what we're gonna do is just pull this back over our window, make these lines as straight as we can get them with our edges. And the reason I'm using the reflected gradient is because I wanna blend these little curtain areas, which are a little bit more translucent. I want to blend them a little bit better because that's not quite how this would look like, you know, transition from the interior brightness to the exterior brightness. So what the reflected gradient allows us to do is kind of pull in on this and then I can even pull down on the feather and really make this make more sense for what we would have seen with our natural eye, uh, because that's essentially what we're trying to mimic when, whenever we do these uh, exposure blends. So maybe something a little bit more like that. And then I'll even pull this in a little bit further, let that transition happen a little bit uh, closer into the window, because there's some brightness that's happening here. We don't need to get rid of all of that, especially if we're seeing all of the brightness inside of the actual uh, house here. So let's go command and zero. And that doesn't look the most natural. So you got to play with this to make it look as natural as it can. All right. And maybe around there. Now, the other issue that I think we're having with this particular blend is that the underlying exposure is a little too dark compared to what 
the interior is. So it just doesn't look as believable. So what I can do is click on the window image and then I can just increase the exposure just a little bit. And now it's starting to match with the exposure internal to the interior. So it looks a little bit more believable. And then of course I can contrast it. So that way it really does kind of fit in with the overall contrast of the image. And you gotta play with the actual blending aspect. So I mentioned that this is like a two layer process. And the reason for that is if I were to use that intersect mask with that gradient, it was only going to allow me to intersect in one area and get that you know final taper look. So what we're gonna do is duplicate this uh, look overall, but what I'm gonna do is click on the three line menu on the interior layer, and then come down and click new stamped layer. And what this is gonna do is take both of those layers and combine them into one. And so now I have a composite of what we were already looking at. I can then turn off this underlying layer of the interior and really just bring up this window one. And so now we have essentially the same starting point that we had when we came into on one. And I'm just going to click on the layer mask icon again, and we will click the plus icon, go to line, and we're just gonna go through this whole process all over again and hopefully get the same look. So again, I'm just making crude selections here and I'll just speed through this process. Okay, so now we have the two windows and I think this is looking relatively decent. Again, this is just one of those things where I know that this window, like it just looks way darker than it probably should. And that's just, an issue with the exposures that I'm trying to blend here. So if you learn anything outside of just the technique of blending these exposures is that you don't want to take a really, really bright exposure and a really, really dark exposure where there's some sort of a uh, transition and then blend them. So learn from my mistake on this, but you know, you live and you learn. So to finish this all the way up, what we're going to do is click on the top interior. And this is again, let me rename this because I don't want to confuse anyone. This is going to be the stem interior. We're now going to click the three line menu and we're going to click new stamped layer one more time. And this creates the final stamped. So I'm just going to call this final. And so now if I turn off all of these layers, you can see we just have a composite image of the interior with the brightness as well as the windows that are not as or you know darker then you can go through here and you know modify shadows and work on the overall contrast and just start to develop the image however you would want to do because you're working with the entire photo overall so hopefully you found some value in this technique. And again, I know that this wasn't the best example just because it's not something that I do regularly. I just really wanted to showcase how it can be done in the event that you are looking to blend exposures and maybe you transition from Lightroom and Photoshop and you want to know how you can do the exact same thing using All One Photo Raw. Now, if you wanna save some money when shopping over at the Almond store, consider using the coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. It is an affiliate coupon, which means I make a commission from everyone who uses it, but it's at no extra charge to you. It's a great way of supporting the channel. If you want to sign up for training and, you know, just have me help you through whatever issues you're having with On One, consider doing that using the link in the description box below. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.